Hello, I'm Vivek Ganotra from Salesforce. Welcome to the Catalyst series, a series of conversations with progressive technology leaders around the world. People who have gone on the difficult road to create real change in their organizations. People who have taken some risks and maybe even broken some rules in order to get their organizations moving in the direction they know it needs to go. It's my pleasure to introduce a series today with my first guest, Peter Broilin, the CIO of ABI in Europe. Peter, good afternoon. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, what about yourself, uh, Vivek? Doing really well on a lovely, hot, sunny afternoon here in London. Oh, indeed, it's, uh, it's beer time here. It is. it is. So, Peter, thank you for making the time. Uh, Peter, you, you've been a successful technology leader at uh, ABI, one of the largest uh, consumer good companies uh, in the world. Can you tell us a little bit about your leadership journey and particularly, you know, some of the highlights or points in time that have been catalysts in your own journey? Well, I started my career um, many years ago now with, uh, with Accenture in, uh, in their technology division. And that's probably where I got hooked to technology because I started off as a, as a developer. I, would, uh, I, would, I was probably not the best developer, uh, but uh, I was very passionate about the, the power of technology. And um, after, you know, as you grow uh, in your career, I, I took on more managerial positions, uh, ended up doing some consulting work with, uh, with Interbrew, uh, which uh, then transformed uh, after the merger with Ambev into Imbev, and then later on uh, ABI. Um, and after some time working there, um, Claudio Garcia, who was the, the CIO at that time, asked me to join. Uh, their technology organization. And uh, to be honest, I didn't regret a day since. My first role, which I spent about two years uh, doing, was uh, in the people and BI space, um, where we led a number of projects. And after two years, I was asked to join and lead the SAP program, which was in a bit of a turmoil uh, with, uh, you know, a lot of developments and uh, rollouts ongoing that were not going uh, very well, particularly one. Um, and I took on, uh, took on that challenge, but it was in the midst of the financial crisis. So 2008, 2009. And uh, as you can imagine, investments were cut. And uh, that, would have been, that would have been the second inflection point, I think, in, uh, in my career, because I, 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 I had to... Um, lead the team through, through these changes, um, lead the, uh, the crisis uh, that we were in, uh, but uh, it ended up uh, quite well. So um, that was uh, the second uh, part of my journey at, uh, at ABI. Uh, after that experience, I was asked to um, join the Europe team, uh, actually it was Western Europe and Central and Eastern Europe at that time, uh, two separate regions, uh, to become an applications uh, director. Um, and uh, about two, three years uh, into that role, I was then asked to join the HQ team again, uh, now based in, in New York, uh, to become VP of demand management. And uh, I think that was like a, a third inflection point in, in my career, probably also for the company because we, we decided at that time to bet uh, bigger on global programs and, and global platforms. And uh, after five years into that role, um, I, I came back uh, now in Europe where I'm a VP of solutions, uh, where I basically do, th do three things. Um, I lead everything that is uh, IT operations, IT infrastructure. Uh, I have a part of the shared services uh, that report into me. And then last but not least, of course, um, the digital projects uh, from a technology point of view. So that's like in a couple of minutes, uh, uh, my career. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, if you take that, that, that journey up to now, and if we look at the context of today and look out in the future, it's probably an obvious statement to make that technology is at an inflection point. And uh, today, for many of us as technology professionals, beyond just improving productivity, et cetera, there is just un infinite opportunities to bring new ideas around creating new businesses underpinned with technology, creating new channels and ways of interactions with our consumers and customers. But this requires a very different muscle, right, for us as leaders and also for the teams that we lead. So can you tell us a little bit of how you're preparing, how you've been preparing yourself to almost uh, take advantage of these opportunities and how you're been preparing your team uh, in this journey ahead? 
Uh, well, Vivek, you, you highlight a very important uh, point, um, is that um, technology uh, always needs to start, or any solutions needs to start with uh, a business problem we're trying to solve. And uh, in your introduction, you highlighted the importance of customers and consumers. But we always try to start uh, understanding uh, their pain points. Um, and uh, you know, our CEO, Brito, often says that, you know, digital transformation in its, it's nothing else than business transformation uh, enabled uh, by, by technology. And indeed, you, as you mentioned, te technology is moving at, uh, at the pace that we've never seen before, uh, or at least throughout uh, my career. Um, you just need to look at, you know, the Gartner hype cycle curves over the, what I do is I compare them over the past years. It's amazing to see the speed at which technology is advancing. Um, take 5G, for example, um, will probably have uh, even more impact uh, than internet uh, had in the, in the 90s. Uh, we're also looking at um, autonomous vehicles, um, which for us is, is, is super important uh, given that last mile, the, the last mile delivery is, is a problem for us. Um, we have customers asking smaller batch, batch sizes uh, more frequent drops because they live in or they work in uh, in uh, in the uh, in the cities. Uh, huge potential, uh, huge potential there. Other examples in terms of emerging technologies are like uh, AR, VR, um, and uh, beer. In my view, is of course closely linked with with entertainment. And I personally don't think we're we're too far from, you know, Vivek, you enjoying your your favorite Corona. Uh, at your favorite uh, beach, uh, maybe that is a Mexican beach. Um, AI and ML uh, is another uh, technology that is uh, uh, emerging very fast. I think there we're probably a little bit more advanced. Um, we have already algorithms uh, that are um, forecasting uh, the churn uh, that are uh, helping us to build uh, orders that are driving the, the transportation uh, planning uh, and um, other, other elements in, in the consumer space as well. A uh, last one I wanted to highlight is maybe digital twins, something we're looking at uh, as well, which is uh, you know, the concept of creating a, a digital replica uh, of, uh, of a physical asset. We already did some, some work there with uh, some of our breweries. But imagine what this could mean for, you know, imagine I could uh, create a digital replica of every bottle that is out there. I could know at what temperature it's, uh, it's being consumed at, uh, where, of course, providing uh, that it's all GDPR compliant. Um, but the amazing opportunities lie ahead in, in, in terms of technology. And uh, to prepare my organization and, and myself, um, what we basically did is we exposed ourselves to more to the outside world. Where we, where we may, in the past, we were more self-centered or looking inside ABI. We listened to consumers. Um, we understood the pain, point, pain points of, of our customers. And a very important uh, metric we use there, uh, something that when I was still in the, in the global team I brought to, uh, to the table was the concept of NPS, something we net promoter score, something we, we kind of copied from, uh, from Walmart. And uh, a very simple measurement, but it, it forces you to really understand the pain points uh, that are driving, uh, for example, a low MPS and starting to tackle uh, those uh, together, of course, uh, with either a consumer or, or customer. Uh, a second uh, element uh, that, uh, that we brought to, to better prepare uh, for this journey is that we hired um, many more uh, profiles with a technology background. Um, and um, not only uh, hiring from the outside, but also, and very importantly, reskilling your, your existing organization. Uh, we invested in trainings. Um, we, we asked people to you know, learn how to code. Um, we asked people to get certifications in, uh, in all types of technologies. We gave trainings on agile, um, agile methodology. So also a very important factor in, in the change we drove. And then the last element uh, I would call and already mentioned in the previous point would be the, the agile methodology. Um, I believe agile um, forces into thinking uh, product-based instead of project-based. 
Um, we set up uh, our internal uh, DevOps teams. Uh, we built squads uh, where we gave a role for the business and a role for the technology teams, uh, which I believe is, is still an important uh, enabler of, of the journey ahead of us. And last but not least, as part of that agile uh, methodology, we also um, uh, started up uh, very recently, actually, a quarter review of all products we are building uh, to truly assess the value we're, we're driving for our stakeholders. Uh, so on a quarterly basis, both the product owner, which is typically a business resource in our organization, and the product manager, which is in, in my part uh, of the organization, they present back to um, me and my peer uh, from, the, from the functional VPs, and they show the value they delivered in the previous quarter. They show the plans and the features we want to develop in the, in the next quarter. And based on that, we want to start dynamically uh, assigning, assigning, um, assigning budgets. Peter, thanks for sharing that, uh, those extensive examples, all, all in a way relevant on how you're building new muscle with both within your function and also probably propagating this across the enterprise. I've got to say, since I got to know you last November and also many of your colleagues, one of the things I'm really fascinated with how ABI functions is you're very curious about the outside world, asking questions about other companies and stuff, which is, I think, really helping as well, contributing for you to continue to push the boundaries further. Now, you know, one of the observations I've been in uh, Salesforce for about 10 months now, and I, I, I listen to a lot of different organizations, particularly the large enterprises, and everyone's got the digital transformation speech. And definitely the lovely PowerPoint, which describes uh, the narrative. But when you dig deeper and you try to understand where they've got to in their journey, you realize there is still a long road to success in true execution, particularly at scale. And it's probably the journey as well on ABI's uh, uh, side in terms of how you're progressing. Can you talk about some of the experiences which have been, wow, that's really helped you succeed and, and set you up for scale and equally in your observation, some of the obstacles that you feel are coming in the way to really drive this transformation at scale? Um, well, Vivek, I, I think, let me try to answer that in, in, with, three, in, with three elements. Uh, I think the first um, point uh, I, I really pressured the organization on, or, and even myself, was to unleash the full capability, uh, the full intellectual power of your teams. I think as a leader, we often underestimate the creativity and energy that lives in the organization to ideate, to, to help resolve business problems, to form uh, new business models. And uh, whilst I set the vision, uh, which in my view was very clear from, from the start, I, I leveraged my, my entire team to, to build a strategy on how we were gonna get there. And I also believe that, um, Passion trumps intelligence, uh, meaning I, I rather have um, people that are passionate about leading a, a product because then I know they're, they're going to live, they're going to live and die for it until we truly resolve those, those pain points uh, for, uh, for the customer. And what we also did is that when we set up those teams, I was referring to in the agile methodology, those squads, we ensure that there was a mix of, of profiles from you know creative profiles in the team to technology centric people that could code uh, people with a ui background uh, people with a change management background uh, because we believe that this uh, this mix of teams cross-functional uh, is truly enabled to drive uh, digital transformation a second point uh, i would like to highlight is uh, is the innovation the um I believe that uh, uh, one change that, that we did and uh, which was often in, in, in an inhibitor in the past was we saw that we now see innovation as a capability. So there's no longer a separate function. Uh, and in, in all fairness, it's something we copied from, uh, from Amazon. But uh, now I ask all of my tower leads, um, both my product owners, uh, product managers to ideate and, and bring uh, new innovative solutions uh, to us to discuss. Uh, where in the past it would be you know, a separate function that was going out seeking um, ideas, uh, benchmarks, best practices. We, we made it everybody's responsibility to drive the product uh, with, uh, with innovations. The, the last point I wanted to highlight here, Vivek, is 
um, you need to be willing to live uh, or to fight through what I call the valley of despair. And if needed, pivot. Uh, I think we've all been in those moments in your career where you know you were the only one believing that it would turn out all right, that you had more detractors than promoters, that uh, the investments were, were quickly evaporating. Well, I encourage my people to seek out those moments. And uh, if they truly passionate about that idea, that they continue to believe in it until they realize what they, what they ultimately wanted to achieve. And um, of course, what you have to balance in, in that respect is, uh, you know, being stubborn versus being persistent. Uh, and what I often uh, give as a recommendation is that, you know, stubborn is, is not good, but being persistent, being be believing in, in what, you, what you laid out and the, the journey you laid out for your team to, to, uh, to accomplish is important. And when you, of course, you see that the criteria you define yourself uh, or the assumptions you laid out, if they're not being met, then it's probably a, a right time to pivot. Um, relook at your scope, relook at the pain point you're trying to address. And those would be, uh, those would be another example of, uh, of what, I, what I helped uh, build in, inside my team. Wow, there's so many nuggets in that. I think the ones that are gonna stick with me is this phrase, passion trumps intelligence and sweat through the valley of despair. Beautiful. So let it, let's bring it back to Peter Broiland. Right. illustrious technology career. But what's been the biggest failure that you look back on and, and, and the learning you had from that that you took forward? Well, I think it was uh, Thomas Edison that said, uh, I, have not, uh, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Uh, so I kind of, uh, I learned from, from failures. But I think my, my biggest miss would probably be uh, a program we started a couple of years back called Connected Home, where we basically tried to build um, uh, a home uh, party app, uh, which would allow uh, you to you know, order your beer and, uh, and food, uh, ensure that all guests got properly invited, that were properly tracked, uh, that you would basically assemble a playlist based on uh, everybody's uh, music musical preferences. Um, although we started off uh, very well, it it ended up uh, it ended up going nowhere. So it's still in the drawer. Uh, you know, it, we might pull it out uh, back in a, in a couple of years, uh, but for the moment, uh, that's on hold. And um, I believe the biggest learning uh, with uh, with that program was that prototyping should not cost a lot of money. I think uh, with the budget that we had, we could have probably iterated a couple of more times, pivoted more to truly understand if we were solving uh, the, a, consumer, a consumer pain point. And it, it's something I learned in, uh, in all of my uh, next uh, programs, or it's something I applied in all the next programs uh, I led or had teams lead where, you know, smaller, if you wanna try out stuff, it does not need to cost a lot of money. Prototyping is cheap. Just talk to a consumer, you know, build a, build a small working prototype. There doesn't need to be any code behind. Uh, and you get a lot of insightful information from, uh, from those exercises. So true. And um, personal learning as well. I think we often make things more complicated than they need to be. So in conclusion, I think you've, you've, you've shared a lot of your own journey and, you know, your perspective on, uh, the, uh, on the wider topic of transformation. For all those technology leaders out there growing uh, in their organizations, uh, really trying, trying to drive impact, what would be two or three points of advice you'd like to leave them with from your own journey? Well, I would say that the first thing, and I, I probably highlighted a couple of times uh, in, in the previous questions, but I would, I would urge everyone to build your internal technology capabilities. Um, it's, it's been a game changer for us. Uh, of course, this doesn't mean you need to entirely insource uh, the developers, the architects, but I think for your key strategic programs, it's, it's an asset uh, that will benefit you a lot. Um, the speed to market, uh, the code quality, the customer satisfaction of what we delivered uh, went up uh, drastically uh, when we started uh, driving much more of internal capabilities. 
building our own uh, DevOps team. Uh, of course, always in conjunction with with partners, with with software companies. Uh, but it's it's been a it's been a game changer for us. So not only not only my customers uh, loved loved this journey, but also the internal teams, the the leaders that that led us through through this change. Uh, had a, a much more higher reward from the work that they were, were leading. Uh, a second element I would, I would point out is um, also refers to the organization. And I know there's different schools of thoughts, but I strongly believe in, in an organization where the product ownership uh, lies with, with the business and the um, product management of the technology operation of, of running a product, ensuring the tech depth is, is taken care of, ensuring that the features are properly built, uh, that innovation is slowing through, through, through the product is an accountability of the technology teams. And when you have this beautiful balance, uh, this uh, between the business and the technology teams, then we have un what I call unstoppable um, vehicles of value. Uh, and uh, that would be the, the second point or the second recommendation I would, uh, I would give. And then the last point I would like to highlight is um, start small. Uh, don't wait for your CEO to tell you to drive digital transformation or all stars to align with the, your business counterparts to have built you know, the, the perfect business case to, to drive the, the program. It's okay to start small. Uh, and often you see that by starting small, you iterate fast. Uh, it could be very tactical demands that you're, you're solving at the, at the beginning, but quickly you'll see that as you get closer to your customer, as you get closer to understanding the pain points of your consumer, you're driving through change. And the more you do that, uh, the, your business counterparts, your, your peers in your organization will join, will join this in, endeavor and, and ultimately help you drive the digital transformation that I think is the unstoppable trend. And uh, if you will not do it, uh, somebody else will. Peter, thank you so much for the generosity and thoughtfulness in, in, in sharing what you've shared with us over the last uh, half an hour. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Mm -hmm.